Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened at the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, then make predictions for next week's top five. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted that number one would be The Wild Robot, number two would be Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, number three would be Transformers 1, number four would be Megalopolis, and number five would be My Old Ass. And oh boy, <laughs> I, I I got three out of five of my predictions, right? So not too bad, but then, you know, you got the, the curse of the movie you, you've never heard of before, coming out of nowhere, doing well, especially when numbers are pretty low. A movie I thought would get into the top five, not making it. Um, and then another one just barely getting inched out of the top five. So let's just dive into what happened this weekend. Number one was, of course, The Wild Robot. Uh, that is not really that surprising to me. Um, I think it was just kind of looking at the numbers, like how how high of an opening weekend is it going to be? Because I know it's based off of a, a, a kid's book series. I don't know how wide ranging the popularity of it is. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know immediately if this is going to be a box office smash. Um, but I think I heard some people saying it was doing better than some studio expectations. Now, of course, it only opened to $35 million this weekend, but I mean, if that's, you know, doing better than some expectations ahead of time, then they must be doing something right. And even though Joker is literally next weekend, I think this will be the movie to get people in, like people who are, you know, trying to take their families to see a movie and obviously not trying to see Joker. They're like, well, you know, we haven't seen the wild robot yet. So they could be doing that because the word of mouth on this thing is great, you know, and, and I feel like more people are kind of buzzing about it as opposed to Transformers 1, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, worldwide, it adds to a total of 53 million. Now, this is all on an initial production budget of $78 million. Uh, so obviously, there's still plenty of room to go in order to double that. They need about $156 million to, to double that. And in our case, you know, for our golden standard of being a success, actually doubling that budget. So they still have a ways to go, but I think we're at a pretty solid point here because, you know, Joker's going to make so much money next weekend, right? Obviously. But in the next coming weeks, we'll see how it fares as far as like hold Overs with other new releases, you know, once Joker starts to die down, what's the movie that'll be right next to Joker that whole time? It could be this one. That, you know, that's not a guarantee. It's just, it'll be interesting to see if it has, like, the Puss in Boots kind of staying power. Because, you know, I mean, similar-ish kind of animation style uh, that DreamWorks did with Puss in Boots. And also, this is a DreamWorks movie. And both films got high praise. Like, better than just, like, oh, it was good. It was like, oh, this is amazing. I really love this, you know? Um, so, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Right now, I think we're in a solid point where they could continue to grow here. Um, as far as DreamWorks opening weekends, it's one million over Puss in Boots, three million below the B movie so not not like horribly low kind of like smack dab in like the middle as far as like their opening weekends it's not breaking any records for the studio but it's not breaking any bad records either as far as like you know what ruby gilman did last year Speaking of which, <laughs> as far as like the overall domestic runs, it has already outgrossed Ruby Gilman by 20 million, Spirit Untamed by 18 million, and Sinbad by 9 million. Um, now it sits behind the Road to El Dorado by 15 million. So it's making its way through some of the lower grossing ones, and like I was saying earlier, we'll see if it has the staying power to keep kind of growing and catch up to some of the other high grossing DreamWorks films. Um, I would hate for it to be on the lower end of the list because it is like one of their best out outings, genuinely speaking. It's it's quite Quite incredible so I would hate for it to be on the lower end. Ruby Gilman it's like it kind of sucks that it flopped as hard as it did but also like I've seen it and it wasn't that great. <laughs> um, as far as the worldwide totals it is outgrow Spirit Untamed by 11 million, Ruby Gilman by 7 and Trolls World Tour for the COVID worldwide run that it had uh, by 5 million and it sits behind the road to El Dorado by 12 million so there you go. Still on the lower end but opening weekend wise it's showing at the very least it won't stay on the lower end. Um, and if my theory about, you know, families trying to figure out what film to take their kids to because it's not Joker stands, it'll probably be this. So we'll see how it goes. We'll talk about Transformers 1 in a second. <laughs> Number two was Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, still holding over very well. For anyone who maybe thought that Transformers 1 could overtake Beetlejuice on its second weekend, no. <laughs> this movie made $16 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of $250 million for Tim Burton's uh, domestic runs. It is still $1 million away from outgrossing the original Batman film, um, but then it'll need $84 million until it outgrosses Alice in Wonderland. And I think it's slowed down just enough where that might not be possible, but at the very least, once it gets that extra $1 million, it's practically already there. It'll be the second highest domestic run in Tim Burton's whole career. Worldwide, it is sitting at $373 million right now, so it's outgrossed Dumbo by $20 million, and the Planet of the Apes Burton film by $11 million, and it's now sitting behind the OG Batman 
Batman by 38 million. So it is right now in the top four highest grossing Burton runs ever. Uh, so there you go. That's quite amazing for this movie. You know, it's 27 million away from like quadrupling its initial production budget of 100 million. So that's quite a win right there. I, I can't believe I, I was seeing those reports like a couple weeks ago saying like it almost was like a streaming film uh, just based off and they had to lower the budget to ensure like a theatrical release. And it's like, man, at this point, you know what I mean? And, you know, I, I guess you wouldn't want to change anything because who knows, you know, if they, because I know they cut down on some elements that were going to be in this film because of the lowering of the budget, but imagine if it was made any other way, could that have affected how much money it's making now? I don't know. Either way, you know, they're, they're, they're riding high. So there you go. Always, always bet on a filmmaker wanting to go theatrical instead of forcing them to do streaming. Goddamn Zaslav. <laughs> Anyways, let's get to number three, Transformers 1. Some people are probably wondering how how did it do on its second weekend. It didn't have the most stellar opening, I think even compared to like how The Wild Robot did this weekend. It's 10 million shy of that one. So how did, how did this one do? It dropped about 61%, so not a great hold. And this was something I was thinking about too. Like you have two animated uh, family films centered around robots, obviously very different kinds of robots, but robots nonetheless. And it, I, I always felt like The Wild Robot was the one that was going to be a little more appealing at the end of the day. It could take business away from Transformers, and Transformers 1 is taking a little bit of business away from the Wild Robot 2, which just, the business that the Wild Robot just took is like, you know, <laughs> like massive. Um, but it made $9.3 million this weekend, so that adds to a domestic total of $39 million. It is sitting behind Bumblebee by $88 million right now. Worldwide, it only bumps up to $55 million, so that places it $384 million away from Rise of the Beasts. Um, and also, I just want to make it clear there's there's still a chance obviously there's a chance for any of these movies to have unexpected bumps either like a couple hours after I record or the next day you know I'm just you know you you know how this show works you know the format you know how it goes um so you know you, you don't want to write off any movie as like it's not doing well especially because we've seen the rebounds over the years like with the greatest showman or Puss in Boots the last wish you know blah 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 <laughs> you know but or, or or even elemental you know elemental last year did not open great but then it went on to have like a modest run where they just barely doubled its 200 million initial production budget and I think I even saw a comment kind of asking do you think Transformers 1 will kind of have you know that kind of same you know success story that surprise success story and I genuinely like I said I don't want to write anything off immediately because we know it can happen but still I just don't see it you know what I mean I really don't like like I've been saying you got the competition with just this and the wild robot alone and then you add in we're about to enter October so we got Joker but then other than that you have Terrifier 3 is coming and it's not like Terrifier 2 made like a billion dollars or anything but that franchise has grown in popularity so Terrifier 3 is going to take some competition away there's other films coming out in October uh, ones I am having a hard time thinking of off the top of my head. Uh, Venom, I guess. <laughs> Venom 3 is coming, and those movies have been making money. You know, th there's money makers still to come, and Transformers 1, I just feel like, is an even though people have been talking pretty highly of it, I don't think it's really to the same level as like the wild, like a lot of people are saying like Wild Robot is my pick for best animated film of the year. And I think some people might have said like, yeah, maybe for Transformers 1, there wasn't really a lot of like definitive, you know, for that, you know, a lot of people saying like, oh no, it was surprisingly good. And maybe that's a thing too. Maybe just the marketing was already the kiss of death for it, you know? So you have some people, you know, saying, you know, it was good. You like, don't, don't even think about that trip. Just go see the movie. Just listen to me, you know? And as much as it's frustrating that people will not listen to, you know, general consensus or just, you know, the word of mouth, you sometimes, <laughs> depending on what it is, it, still, you know, th these are factors leading to why it, it probably will not hold over well. And plus Transformers is a brand that's kind of just like, it's been here for so long and I feel like people are kind of tired of it because we've gotten, we you know, we got Bumblebee, we got this movie, but we've gotten so much bad from like the films at least, you know what I mean? <laughs> even though some, even though it has its fans and there's some people that are entertained by it, at least also at the start of it with the first movie back in 2007, but still, you know, it, it's, it could be a case of just it's, it's too late or maybe they just were, were you know, too quick to make this film at this time. Maybe this franchise needs a couple years to breathe and, you know, regroup, you know, it, 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 because we just got Rise of the Beast last year, which did like, okay, you know what I mean? Compared to its budget, it, you know, all right. It, doing better than this movie, I guess. So yeah, I don't know. There's, there's probably a plethora of reasons why this one's not doing so hot right now and probably why it won't have like a rebound tour uh, as disappointing as that may be. Man, Paramount, you know what I mean? They released Dungeons and Dragons last year, which some people did not care for the marketing of that one, but people were saying it's surprisingly good, go give it a shot, but 
that that's another Paramount film that was let down by like just the way they marketed that at the start, I guess, and that's just kind of what's happening here. That movie made a little more money than this one, though, so yeah, it's disappointing. You know, I mean, worldwide, the fact that it's not even over like a hundred million right now, like the worldwide numbers aren't really, you know, getting us to the doubling point faster. You know, we're kind of still here in the in the low numbers. All things considered, like the Wild Robot in its first weekend, like I said, opened to 53 million worldwide. That's only two million below what Transformers One has just made two weeks in release. So. I don't, I don't know. Plethora of reasons, all disappointing and sad for a good movie. Uh, number four is Devara Part One. This is, you know, one of the movies that just came out of nowhere. I'm sorry, <laughs> missed it completely. Made 5.6 million this weekend on a budget of 300 crore. So, yep, there you go. It's, it's always, you know, you know how it goes. It's always difficult to know which ones are going to like pop off and like have some kind of attention. It, you know, with the low numbers, especially, it's like, is this going to be able to squeak by? You know what I mean? So. It, it happens, whatever. <laughs> Number five is Speak No Evil. So this movie even holding on a little better than some of our two, our two other new releases, I should say. And we'll talk about those in a second. Um, but this movie made $4.3 million, adding to a domestic total of $28 million for James Watkins. That places it $26 million away from The Woman in Black. Worldwide, it is sitting at $57 million. So they have... Where they, they they've tripled their 15 million initial production budget. Uh, they need three million until they have quadrupled it, the, the the 60 million margin. So you know it may not be like you know equal to the Woman in Black's you know run worldwide 71 million away from that film. But you know for the budget it had for the Blumhouse model for today's you know <laughs> movie going climate I guess mo movie going numbers you know it's it's done pretty well for itself. So there you go. I there's no way you make a sequel out of this. But you know as far as like getting James Watkins some more work, I mean I'd be down for that. I enjoyed the Woman in Black and Eden Lake is like genuinely so unsettling and difficult to watch but you know quite a work from him you know so I would love to see something more kind of up his alley as opposed to just taking somebody else's property and kind of doing the Blumhouse America fuck yeah version you know I, I would love to see this. so if they can guarantee that that'd be great I hope it's not let's defang other foreign horror films I hope that's not the case I hope that's not what's what's being proved here anyways number six let's just get to it Megalopolis more like Megaflopolis ha 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 People have said that before. This is not original, so sorry, <laughs> had to do it. Um, yeah, it made $4 million this weekend. Now, it was not looking good from the pre-sales either way. I think once word got out that this is maybe even a little too weird for uh, a casual audiences to get, the cinema scores at a D plus. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm sure there might have been some people who were maybe considering it, but then they heard all this buzz, how divisive it is, and they're like, nah, fuck that. You know what I mean? Um, of course, this is on a budget of 120 million, but the here's the interesting thing that's kind of hard to navigate is that this is like, as far as I'm aware, entirely kind of financed, even like the marketing itself. Uh, funded by Francis Ford Coppola. I don't know. It's distributed by Lionsgate. I don't know how much money they have personally sunk into it. Um, I, I know for certain Francis Ford Coppola will not be getting, you know, back his investment, everything he's put into this. He will not be seeing that amount of money, at least from this film again. Um, I'm not sure what this means as far as like splitting profits with, with Lionsgate or, or, you know, even the cast and crew, if there's any like back end stuff or whatever, probably not seeing that shit. It's just... I mean, you, you had to expect this, though, you know what I mean? Like, for all the talk of, like, it's my passion project, I've spent years working on it, and it's weird, it's fucking weird, you've never seen anything like it, you know, and that's kind of the the word of mouth when people see it, like, yeah, it's fucking weird. You know, you kind of had to expect this isn't, like, a commercial film, you know? I'm, I'm glad that Lionsgate, you know, distributed it, because, you know, it, it is a bummer that in today's day, you know, a, a, a living legend of a filmmaker had a hard time, you know, getting a movie funded or, or even getting it to the final stages of release. But that being said, I, I get it. Once you see it, it's like, yeah, it's it's a hard sell, you know, and it doesn't really work for many people. A lot of people are, are down with it. And that's I don't want to take anything away from your experience with the film. For me personally, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, I admire you know, the attempt, not necessarily the execution or most of what happened. <laughs> 
Um, as far as like opening weekends, it, 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 it's one of Francis Ford Coppola's lowest. Um, there's a lot of numbers on the numbers.com website. It's kind of hard to navigate in his case because he's been around so long. You have movies like The Godfather that open the opening weekend is reported to be like one million, but obviously it went on to have this insane gross. And that's only because, you know, open limited in that time period, especially unadjusted for inflation, you know, 70s box office numbers, whatever, you know, it, it, that makes sense. Uh, so I, I, I kind of didn't bother with like comparing the opening weekend stuff. I did want to mention real quick as far as like the domestic grosses. Um, it's only a couple hundred thousand away from outgrossing The Conversation, a Gene Hackman thriller that's quite good, quite excellent. Um, it has outgrossed uh, Rumblefish by 1.5 million, One from the Heart by 3 million, and 1 million over Twixt, Tetro, Youth Without Youth, Dementia 13, and The Rain People. Um, some movies that I believe are all theatrical releases, maybe like a TV one slipped in there. I apologize if that's the case. Um, so I, I really, I, I wanted to avoid talking about the opening weekends for this sp specific case just because it just didn't seem worth it and just kind of pointless. But in this case also, I just wanted to point out like, yeah, this is, you know, Francis Ford Coppola has, you know, released some money makers in the past. And right now this is a film that is not to that standard. You know what I mean? I don't even know if making it more mainstream would have helped in this case. It's just kind of the climate of, of the box office, you know, a name like Francis Ford Coppola isn't a surefire, like Spielberg, you know, releasing the Fablemans or West Side Story, you know, just because it's his name doesn't mean those are going to make any money and those, you know, were flops. Uh, I guess same with Scorsese, you know, Killers of the... I mean, and that's a case of, like, that's an Apple film, but Killers of the Flower Moon did not, you know, uh, double its initial production budget. So, ah, uh, yeah, it, this is... I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, like, to a point where it's, like, I don't really know how to, like, properly dissect any of this stuff. Like, what numbers matter? Does it even... You know, what does this mean? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier to talk about movies like number seven, Deadpool and Wolverine, making 2.6 million, adding to a domestic total of 631 million. Uh, you know, last week we talked about how it's now in the top five highest grossing domestic runs for the MCU. It's 47 million away from Infinity War right now. Worldwide, it is sitting at 1.321 billion. So it's 13 million away from Black Panther, still the seventh highest grossing list. See how simple that was? You know, it's so easy to talk about this, you know. All, all of the movies associated with it are, you know, kind of from the same year. It's easier to compare numbers, and here's the list. You, you know, this is pretty accurate, you know. Man, so, so much easier. It's a success. Look at it. <laughs> Number eight is My Old Ass, which I thought would do a little bit better, uh, I don't know, just... Aubrey Plaza, it's a comedy coming of age thing. I thought maybe there was maybe a bigger boost in marketing for it and the lump numbers maybe were low enough. That is not the case here. It made 2.22 million. Um, that does add to a domestic total of 2.8 million though, just because it was in limited release for a little bit. Not sure what the budget of this thing is, but like when you watch the movie, it's probably not a whole lot. Like Aubrey Plaza is in it, but I bet it's just one of those like, yeah, I only got paid like 500,000 kind of deals. You know what I mean? Like this could be incredibly low budget. They don't go to any extravagant locations. You know, it's, it's mostly in one setting. So I can't imagine it costs too, too much. Um, so maybe they're in a good spot. I just, I thought maybe it would do a little bit better, but people have been liking it. So maybe it'll catch on, not necessarily box office wise, but like later on, on streaming and that could be cool for it. At number nine, we have Never Let Go. This one didn't even really hold over that well. It didn't make a whole lot last weekend, but I was kind of surprised to see it drop this much, but it only made 2.20 million neck and neck with my old ass this weekend, adding to a domestic total of 8.2 for Alexander Aja. It is 17 million away from Piranha 3 Double D. So still not really close to moving up in the Aja list, but I mean, it, it didn't really have the best push. I thought maybe there was some hope, but eh. And it, you know, it's it's a fine movie. It's not really one I would say like, go see it immediately. It's it's a fine movie if you aren't interested in many things and you're like just looking for a good thriller or something. Um, but I guess that's not the best endorsement. <laughs> Closing out the video number 10 is The Substance. Uh, I, I, even though it's still not close to doubling its 17.5 million initial production budget, I'm so happy that it made some money in the top 10, as opposed to just out of the top 10. It made 1.8 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of 6.8 million worldwide. It is sitting at 9.3. So like I said, not really close to that number. Not that anyone expected it to anyway. So I would say that's a win just based off of that. <laughs> you know, the fact that some American audiences <laughs> went out to see it despite hearing how gross it was, or even, you know, this weekend, you know what I mean? Even though it didn't like hold over spectacularly, but the fact that it didn't like immediately drop out, it still made a number in the millions. That's cool that some people were willing to take a chance on an original film, especially one that was being talked about as like this gross new thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, if you haven't seen it yet, 
my favorite film of the year so far. Please check it out. Anyways, now it's time for the fun part, the predictions for next week's top five. Number one, Joker fully ado, pretty simple there. <laughs> Number two, I think will be The Wild Robot. It'll be interesting to see how that one holds over also in comparison, especially in the coming weeks. Number three, I think will be Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Number four, Transformers 1. And then number five, I think will be White Bird, the Wonder film, the Wonder sequel, kind of sequel. I feel like some people have definitely forgotten this is coming out. Wonder was a box office success, but that doesn't mean this one has had the same kind of push or attention. I think it will just sneak into the top five, though. It could not, but we'll see. Anyways, what are your predictions for next week's top five? Leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.